if you're a parent and you're trying to figure out why you've been feeling burnt out, worn out, tired, you don't have the energy that you used to have, things don't seem to be working out the way that they should be working out, you could be experiencing parental burnout. In this video, we'll talk about what parental burnout looks like, how we can recognize it in ourselves and others, and also what we can do to prevent it from happening or to stop it from happening if you're currently going through it right now. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to all of the videos on this channel, but let's get into it. So what is parental burnout? It's simple. It's physical, mental, and emotional exhaustion that can be attributed to the constant duties that are associated with parenting. As parents, we know we have a lot of responsibilities. We're juggling our career. We're juggling our parenting. We're juggling our family. We're juggling so many different things. And a lot of times, all of those things, when they come together, they can cause us to be exhausted, right? We can get exhausted just from doing our duties as parents. So we'll talk about in this video what this parental burnout is and how we can find solutions so we don't have to continue to go through the things that are causing us to be burnt out, the things that are causing us to not have the energy that we should have, the things that are causing us to not necessarily know how we can solve some of these issues. So parental burnout isn't something that you're going to be able to go to the doctor for and the doctor is going to prescribe you a medicine for, right? But there are symptoms of parental burnout that we can recognize and that we can look at uh, when trying to figure out what is going on with us as parents and what we can do to resolve the issues. It can affect different people in different ways. So me as a father of an 18-year-old and a four-year-old, parental burnout could affect me differently than the mother who has a newborn or a married couple who have three or four kids, right? Some people's symptoms can be physical while some people's symptoms can also be mental. And there are also times where you can have both, right? You can have both physical and mental symptoms of parental burnout. What you're going through can affect you physically, and but also it can affect you mentally. We know that a lot of times the stressors that occur in our life, they aren't just internal stressors. Those stressors can present themselves to be physical issues as well, right? So some of the symptoms could be exhaustion or constantly feeling tired. When you're when you're raising kids, especially for me as someone who was raised uh, a toddler, I remember when my son was was a newborn, right? And 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 those sleepless nights of trying to get him to to go to bed and get on a sleep schedule. Those things can be physically exhausting. Uh, sometimes you feel helpless. You might feel hopeless. So that's a a mental symptom, right? So you might not feel like you're giving everything that you have to give and you start to feel like you can't do anything else, like you're not doing everything that you should be doing as a parent or that this cycle that you're in is never going to end. Um, you can feel constantly irritable and easily upset. You can begin to isolate yourself from friends and family. I see that sometimes. Or you can begin to increase the use of drugs or alcohol and start to self-medicate because you don't know what you can do to help you alleviate the pain that you're feeling from being burnt out as a parent. Uh, also, another thing that we see is lack of pr productivity. So if you are burnt out, if you're burnt out mentally, if you're burnt out physically, if you're exhausted, then you're not going to always be able to complete certain tasks. And that, that can show itself uh, in your job. It can show itself in, in things that you're trying to do outside of work, whether you're trying to uh, launch your own business or launch your own product or things like that. But if you don't have the capacity to do those things because of the parental burnout, then you're going to find yourself not being as productive as you want to be. Uh, also, feelings of guilt or feelings of shame, because when, when, when burnout manifests itself when our, within our lives, then we don't feel like we're doing enough, right? We're tired all of the time, but we don't know why we're tired. We're, we're broken down, but we don't know why we're broken down. But a lot of times, if we look at the surroundings and what we're doing and all of the areas that we're being pulled in and give ourselves credit for those things, the things that we are accomplishing, uh, then those feelings of shame and those feelings of guilt may not necessarily still be there. Uh, also, it can be tough to remember things. You can have changes in your appetite or your sleeping habits, or you can also become emotionally detached from your child because you're trying to manage your own emotions while your child is growing and learning how to manage their own emotions, right? So it can be difficult to, to, to do these things and to, to connect with your child. And, and a lot of times that can cause parents to feel guilty because if they aren't necessarily 
feeling connected to their child, if they aren't feeling connected to uh, the children that they brought into this world, that can cause a sense of burnout, right? So what are some of the risk factors that can contribute to parental burnout? What are some of the things going on in our lives and our day-to-day -day lives outside of us just being parents that can contribute to the burnout being magnified because we aren't just parents, right? We aren't just living in a bubble where the only thing that we do is parents. We have other things in our lives that we have to handle and that we have to juggle. So some of the things that can contribute to parental burnout are job status. Are you employed? Are you unemployed? Are you happily uh, employed, right? Is your, is your boss getting to a, to a point where you can't stand to go to work. So you have to manage the things that are going on at work where you when you hate your job, but then you have to come home and, and deal with the burnout that is associated with being a parent. Uh, what about lack of financial resources, right? So if you if you aren't uh, able to, to maintain the bills in the household like you like you want to, that becomes a stressor. And that stressor can contribute to the way that we react with our kids, the way that we act with ourselves, the way that we uh, 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 connect with our significant other, uh, all of those things, or the number of children, right? So if you have uh, more children, then the likelihood of you experiencing parental burnout is going to increase. Even ages can play a role in parental burnout. So if you're an older parent, and let's say you have a younger child, right, you may not necessarily have the energy that you had 10, 15 years ago to, to run around and run behind a toddler or to do the things that are required to make sure a newborn has everything that they need. So those things can contribute to parental burnout because you may not be getting the amount of rest that you need. If you're older, you might need a little bit more rest at 40 than you did when you were 20. So it's important to understand that age plays a difference, our age and the age of the child. Uh, also, having a child with special needs, as someone who has a son who's on the autism spectrum, I can tell you right now that uh, just having to deal with meltdowns, having to deal with all of the things that are associated with having a child uh, that has special needs, right? Uh, those things can be difficult to manage especially if you don't necessarily have the, the resources or if you don't have a support system around you, you're trying to figure it out. Your significant other is trying to figure it out and y'all are just working together or you're working by yourself to make sure that child has every single thing that they need. But again, you have to be able to manage the stress that comes along with that. So one question that I hear is parental burnout normal or am I a bad parent? And I think a lot of parents start to feel guilty because uh, they don't feel like they're doing enough. They start to feel guilty because they don't feel like they've accomplished everything that they should as a parent, or they're not seeing the results that they thought they were going to see uh, as a parent. So I'll say this, parental burnout is not only normal, more people are experiencing it than we think. And one thing that parents, as parents, what we have to understand is that we're not going through things alone, right? So one of the things that we have to do if we are going through burnout or if we are if we are experiencing uh, a level of burnout we have to understand that finding a support system is important and not only finding that support system but leaning into that support system is extremely important in most cases parental burnout is it's more about a lack of resources right parents who are working and and, and trying to juggle the stressors of of our life we're trying to uh, manage our career we're trying to manage our family we're trying to manage a budget we're trying to make sure that our kids are safe. We are, we're trying to make sure that our kids are emotionally connected to us and our, they have everything that they need, right? Uh, those resources that allow for that may not necessarily be readily available, right? So, you know, in, in this COVID environment, I know I keep saying that, but in this COVID environment, we have to understand that life is harder than it was three years ago. Right. So we have to understand that the, the things that we are doing for our kids, we're doing the best that we can in this moment with what we have. I'll say that again. We're doing the best that we can in this moment with what we have. So a lot of times we stretch ourselves thin because we're trying to do so much with limited resources. And even when you look at the COVID-19 pandemic, it's taken a toll on all of us. And not only that, but it's compounded the stressors that were already there. <laughs> There were already stresses in our lives prior to COVID, but now it makes it harder for us to find the things that we need as parents, which contributes to higher level of exhaustion, higher levels of stress, higher level of burnout. But the good news is there are ways to stop and even prevent parental burnout from happening. So let's discuss some of those strategies that we can use to stop parental burnout. 
The first thing that I think we can do, we have to prioritize taking care of ourselves. We have to also create more space for our own joy. So once we begin to take care of ourselves, then we can in turn be better at taking care of everyone else. We can't take care of anyone else if we haven't first taken care of ourselves and make sure that we have everything that we need, right? So we have to have all of the tools and all of the things that we need to be happy, healthy, and whole to create that space for ourselves, right? So we can have everything in place when it's time for us to help our kids, when it's time for us to be productive at work, when it's time for us to build relationships with others, we have to prioritize taking care of ourselves physically, mentally, and emotionally. And I know a lot of times those things can be hard to, 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 to talk about. Those things can be hard to, to understand because as parents, our first priority is always our kids, right? Our first priority is to make sure our kids have everything that they need. Our first priority is to give them and, and provide for them and do all of those things. But at first, we have to provide for ourselves. And we have to do that by taking care of ourselves and finding pieces of joy and pieces of love for ourselves and creating safe spaces for ourselves to exist in. The next thing we have to make sure that we are staying connected to our friends and staying connected to our family and talking with them about our experiences, especially in the Black community. You know, a lot of times we want to keep things to ourselves. We don't necessarily want to share with others. We don't want to tell them what we're going through. But if, we if we're talking to each other about these experiences, not only does it give us a sense of relief, it helps the next family member or it helps the next friend when they might be going through something similar to what we go through. But we can also benefit just by getting things off of our chest and talking through these issues to someone who is an adult. Because if you're around kids all day and all, you're just surrounded by your kids and you know, the, the only conversation that you have is with your kids about school and about the things that are going on with them, you need to have other conversations. You need to be in, in relationships with other adults who can help you talk through some of these things. We can also begin to practice mindfulness, right? And, and, and develop healthy coping strategies. Some folks do yoga. Some folks exercise. Some folks uh, have found hobbies. We have to begin to practice mindfulness and stay in the moment that we're in because we can, we can only control what we can, can control in the moment. We can't control anything outside of the moment that we're in right now. As parents, a lot of times we want to control what our kids do. We want to control where they go, who they're with, all of those things. But what we have to begin to do is practice staying in this moment that we're in right now and find ways to cope with what we're going through. And, and by healthy coping strategies, that means not self-medicating. That means not leaning into any type of toxic behaviors because those things then become unhealthy. Also, find a therapist. I'm a proponent of mental health. I am a, a proponent of particularly mental health for Black folks and for us sitting down and, and talking with a therapist, talking with a professional who can help us work through some of these issues. Like find a therapist that you feel comfortable talking to. There are resources online that you can go to that can help you find a therapist in your area. There are therapists who you can speak with remotely if you don't want to leave your home. All of those things are available to you on your computer, on your phone, uh, but you have, to, you have to take that first step. And I know a lot of us are dealing with trauma and a lot of us are dealing with grief and a lot of us are dealing with the things that have been bothering us since childhood or bothering us for the last 10, 20 years or relationships that didn't work out the way that we thought it would, jobs that didn't. A therapist will help you work through all of those things so you can not only be the best parent that you can be, but so you can be the best person that you can be. And the last one, I think it's important to understand that we have to give ourselves grace. We have to give ourselves grace and we have to begin to understand that no one is perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect parent. There's no such thing as a perfect child, right? So a lot of times we expect our children to be perfect. We expect our children to always uh, do the right thing and make the right decisions. And when they don't, that causes us to stress. That causes us to get burnt out. But we have to understand that everyone makes mistakes. And when we make mistakes, we want others to forgive us, right? Or when someone else makes a mistake, we, we tell them that it's okay, you made a mistake. But oftentimes it's harder for us to forgive ourselves and to give ourselves grace than it is for us to give uh, someone else grace or for us to forgive someone else. So it's important to understand that giving yourself grace is the first step. It's the very first step. It should have been number one on this list. It's the first step that we can take in preventing parental burnout. So let's review.
Parenting is hard. Parental burnout is a real thing. And as parents, we have to look at some of these symptoms that could be showing up in our lives, like lack of sleep, lack of appetite, lack of productivity, uh, feeling helpless, feeling hopeless. We look at these things and we say, we take a step back and we say, am I experiencing burnout as a parent? And if so, what can I do to, to, to take away or to alleviate this feeling of being burnt out? We have to be intentional about stepping up to the plate and doing what we have to do for ourselves, right? So make sure you're following us, Black People Parenting, on all the things, on all social networks. Make sure you like us, make sure you follow us, make sure you join the Black People Parenting community on Facebook. All you have to do is search for us, give this video a huge thumbs up, make sure you like it, please share it, and I will see you on the next Teachable Tuesday. Peace.